Hello and welcome to our online patient meeting. It's good to be back with you. I'm your host, Caroline, as always. And also, as always, please let me know that you can hear me as we have another interesting topic uh, today and we have another special guest and top expert. So, hi, uh, Dr. Veronica, how are you feeling today? Hello, I'm fine. I'm happy to, to participate in your webinar today. I am very glad to hear that. And of course, we are definitely uh, happy that you have decided to join us and uh, join our initiative, Stronger Together initiative. And of course, we'll be presenting our topic today. And just to uh, let you know, of course, all those events have been brought to you thanks to our ambassadors and partners. Most of you uh, should already know uh, them as they had previously uh, either online patient meetings or IVF webinars. But as always, I want to thank them for their constant support. And uh, without them, as always, it wouldn't be possible to uh, have so many of those events. And today, again, we have another interesting topic to discuss. So uh, first of all, let me just introduce you, uh, Dr. Veronica Lejidos Lopez. She's the gynecologist and fertility specialist at EV clinic in Alicante. So hello to Alicante as well. I believe that weather is quite nice out there as well, right? Yes, we have a very sunny day today. Um, that's that's really good to hear indeed. I could use this weather, I'm sure. So thank you so much. And I just want to mention that we will start with the most common questions uh, on egg donation. So all you need to know before you actually go for that treatment and um, so dr veronica will answer them for you and right after that it will be time for your questions so as always don't hesitate go ahead and type those questions in the chat section so that dr veronica can simply answer them for you one by one don't miss that opportunity to ask uh, your questions of course all right and uh, well in such case are you ready to begin Yes, I'm ready. I only want to say uh, good afternoon to all the people that, that are listening to us uh, this afternoon and we can start. Excellent. Go ahead then. Okay. I only want to say that I am also the coordinator of International Department at IBI Alicante and I have 10 years of, of experience in, in this field, in the, in the field of the assisted reproduction. Well, um, today we have we are presenting to you all the aspects about egg donation. Egg donation is a treatment, and perhaps nobody in, would think uh, that can need an egg donation treatment at uh, any point. At any point. But sometimes it's the only option to get a pregnancy or is the easiest option because sometimes with the own eggs it's very difficult or, or impossible. Uh, the egg donation uh, is the treatment uh, that have the highest pregnancy rates in all the clinics and depending on the clinics their, their pregnancy rates can vary, they are different. But the egg donation is the best treatment because the pregnancy rates are, are around 560% transferring one embryo with only one attempt. To start for an egg donation, we, we need to first, the, the couple needs to uh, confirm that they want to to do an egg donation and this is the most difficult step because the psych psychological aspect is very important once they have done the they make a, a, the decision uh, they have only advantages because the treatment is very easy and all the stimulation uh, the ovarian stimulation is done on the donor and the recipient only need to prepare her uterus for, to receive the embryos and the the recipient part is the easiest it's a hormonal treatment the majority of the treatment are tablets and the 
we need to synchronize the donor with the recipient. We select the donor first, before starting any of the treatment, we have to select the donor. And the donor is selected according to the physical characteristics, according to uh, the black group of, of the patient, to select the best matching for her. We are taking into account, we are focusing our attention mainly in the male, female physical characteristics because it's the most important. And the black group must be compatible with both of the, the, the patient and the partner in the case they have partner because sometimes we have treatments uh, when the woman uh, wants to, to get a pregnancy without a partner and once we have selected the donor according to the physical characteristic we can start the preparation of the recipient before being donors all the women need need to pass very restrictive tests to know that they are healthy women and everything is normal the karyotype that is the chromosomes must be normal to be a donor. We rule out sexually transmitted diseases, all the sexually transmitted diseases, and uh, we check their ovarian reserve. All the donors have a very high ovarian reserve because we need to stimulate their ovaries and to have a very good number of eggs. In everything, we always guarantee that you will have a minimum or eight, eggs so we always donate more than eight eggs and we guarantee you that you will have a minimum of two good embryos at day five of development when they arrive to the end we, we donate the eggs we fertilize the eggs with a donor sample of, or with the partner's semen sample and we obtain embryos the embryos need to be developing during five days to select the best one we select the top quality one to be transferred to the recipient uterus. And if we have more, if we have surplus embryos, uh, we can freeze them for the future. We can do another treatment for another child in the future. Or in the case we don't get pregnant the first time because transferring one embryo in the first attempt around 60 percent uh, of the patients get pregnant but 40 percent don't get pregnant the first attempt so they can repeat with the surplus embryos that are frozen and you we guarantee you that you will have minimum two embryos two or more embryos so we can synchronize the donor with the recipient to have every the periods synchronized and do everything uh, without waiting uh, time. We can start the preparation of the donor, the preparation of the recipient, and we, uh, are sched we schedule everything to have a very short time of waiting to, uh, to arrive to the day of the embryo transfer. Perhaps you are uh, uh, asking why uh, the doctor is telling that we are transferring only one embryo. Uh, nowadays, uh, we are uh, Ibitin uh, uh, recommends to transfer only one embryo. It's a single embryo transfer because uh, we are avoiding the twin pregnancy. The twin pregnancy can have a lot of complications to the, for the mother and for the babies. So it's usual to recommend to transfer only one sometimes we can transfer two embryos if the couple or the patient would like to transfer two but we are assuming the risk of twins and the twins the twin pregnancies are more complicated in general and transferring one by one with egg donation the probabilities of pregnancy their pregnancy rate are very high so we don't have to assume assume the risk of twins because it's not necessary to assume risk Having, having so high pregnancy rates with only, with only one embryo transfer. 
I think in general I, I have told you all the steps. Uh, uh, the donor needs a treatment, the recipient needs a treatment, and everything is synchronized to do it in the shorter uh, period of time. We always uh, personalize the, the treatment uh, to the medical background. Uh, depending on the medical background, we can change things. But in general, we, we perform the treatment um, as I have told you. I think, Caroline, we can, we can start with the, with the usual question that can have the patients. Of course, thank you so much for explaining all the details so far. And of course, let's start with those most common questions right now. The first question, so how long is the procedure? Okay, in general, since we start the treatment until we are right to the day of the embryo transfer, uh, we need uh, two months, more or less. One and a half, two months is the period of time that we need to have everything done. We start with the first menstruation of the recipient, the recipient's first menstruation, and from that, from that moment, in two months, we are finishing the treatment. We are transferring the embryo. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for answering the very first question. And um, now let's go to the next question that we have. So with an egg donation treatment, are we avoiding all the inherited diseases? Okay, this is a very good question. And um, it's a very frequent question that patients have because uh, with an egg donation treatment, we are avoiding the uh, probabilities of chromosomal alterations. The chromosomal alterations are increasing when the woman is over 38 years old. So all the donors are between 18 and 35 years old. In those ages, the probabilities of chromosomal alteration are very, very low. So we are avoiding chromosomal alteration like Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, the most the most frequent syndromes uh, that are related to the maternal age. But we are not avoiding all the inherited diseases because uh, there are thousands of inherited diseases. Uh, we are avoiding the most frequent syndromes related to maternal age. But there is an optional test that we can perform is called genetical compatibility test. Two is another filter to select the donors. Uh, we are doing a, a blood test to the donor and to the to the male partner. The, we are uh, looking for mutations. If they are career of mutation and they don't know, they don't have illnesses, they don't have the disease, but between the population, around 80% of the population can have a, a mutation in their genes. And if there is a coincidence and the mutation is in the egg and the same mutation is in the sperm, we have a risk of having a newborn with an inherited disease. So we can filter our donor according to the male partner to select the donor compatible with him. And we are avoiding to select a donor that can have the coincidence with the same mutation. In this case, we are uh, studying around 550 genes related to inherited diseases. This is a good number. It's true that there are more, the, the, uh, there are thousands of inherited mutations and inherited diseases. But at the moment, nowadays, we can study around 600 genes to avoid the, the coincidence between the donor and the male partner. But not all the inherited diseases can be avoided. But uh, adding the genetic compatibility test to an egg donation treatment, the risk is very, very low. 
All right. Excellent. Thank you so much for answering in detail this um, this question as well. Okay. Um, next one is uh, this one. Uh, can I perform an egg donation treatment without any hormonal treatment? Okay. I have told you that it's usual to have a, a treatment for the, for the recipient. It's the most usual way to do it because it's easier for us to synchronize everything and it's easier for the patients to book flights when they are living abroad. The, if the patient, we have international patient that needs to book flights and it's necessary to, to use a hormonal treatment. It's the only way to schedule uh, the embryo transfer when we would like to have, the, to have it. Can I perform an egg donation without treatment, uh, hormonal treatment? Yes, we can do it, but only in, in some uh, cases. For, to do a treatment, uh, an egg donation without uh, hormonal treatment, we need that the woman has natural cycles, regular natural cycles, so re regular menstruations every month. If the woman doesn't have regular menstruation, we cannot do a natural cycle. We, in the case that we don't use hormonal treatment, uh, we need to use frozen donor eggs. Uh, we have donors that are waiting to be stimulated and we synchronize the donor in fresh with the recipient. And this is the most common the do donations for for ebitin and we also have a very huge huge uh, egg uh, bank and we can use frozen eggs vitrified eggs if we use vitrified eggs we can do the treatment with a hormonal treatment in a natural cycle it's the only way to do it in a natural cycle, we can use frozen eggs, and when the woman is the recipient woman, the patient is ready, we can schedule the donation. If the woman is ready on Monday, in a natural cycle, we don't we cannot change the day of to be ready. Is the the day of the, the patient is we cannot change it. So if the woman is ready on Monday, we will have the embryo transfer next monday one week we have one week of time to book flights only in the case of hormonal treatment we have more, more time we can have two weeks three weeks to to schedule everything and to plan the the trip and book flights but it's possible to do it without hormonal treatment all right excellent thank you so much once again for answering this question now let's go to the next one so fresh eggs or frozen eggs have same results yes of course we have the two options the fresh eggs or frozen eggs and they have seen the same uh, pregnancy rates the same results uh, we are donating a good uh, a good number of eggs to guarantee that you will have the patient will have a minimum two good blastocysts. Blastocysts is an embryo with they with five days of development, and it, it doesn't mind if the if they are fresh or frozen eggs because the donor are between. 18 and 35 years old, they are young. The quality of the eggs are very good and they don't suffer in the frozen and thawing procedure. The only risk that is very low is the sur sur survival rate for the frozen eggs. 95% of the eggs survive correctly. So we have only a 5% of risk of loose eggs so between 10 eggs we can use we can lose maximum one egg after thawing the thawing procedure that is very very low but we take into account when we are donating the eggs we 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 can't we take into account that between all the eggs that we are donating perhaps one can be lost but this is not relevant so the the results are the same with fresh and frozen eggs and we 
uh, prefer for international patients sometimes it's easier to to do a treatment with frozen eggs because we have more flexibility to to plan the trip and to book flights and to have everything ready when the couple would like to to come to to come to the clinic they have more time to decide all right again thank you so much and now we will go to the final question when it comes to those most common ones and then it will be time for your questions and dr veronica you can see there are quite a few questions ready so uh, let's finish with this one it is not easy to travel for me can we schedule the donation a fixed week yes of course if you have uh, holidays uh, the first week or in, in august we can plan everything two months before to 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 perform the embryo transfer the week that the patient wills but we need to start two months before so if we have for, for example you i want to have the embryo transfer in september we have to start in july in july we start uh, the treatment we start a contraceptive pill to synchronize everything and starting in july we can uh, schedule the embryo transfer for a fixed date it's possible okay excellent thank you so much for answering all those most common questions and now it is time for our patients questions so dr veronica are you ready for them yes of course i'm ready okay. happy to hear this then uh, as you can see plenty of the questions are already here so let's begin with the first one how do you try to get a match in terms of interest and education oh this is a very common for, <laughs> question um according this the, according to the spanish law because in it can't its country the laws are different for the donations and there are countries that are that is not uh, it is it's not permitted the, the 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 egg donation or the semen donation in Spain. We have uh, more flexibility for the donation, but we are selecting the donor according to physical characteristics, blood group, and the ma uh, maximum similarity to the to the patient. In terms of interest, interest and education, this is very difficult to 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 select because. Uh, the majority of the, of those uh, uh, topics are educational, and very few of them are genetic. So, um, uh, the Spanish law doesn't say anything about it. Um, we only are selecting the donors according to physical characteristic. We always uh, ask for the, the patient a portrait picture to have the all the characteristics and we are using a database that is matching the the portrait uh, the donor portrait with the donor recipient to select the best matching for the patient but in questions of interest and education uh, it's very difficult to select because there there are donors that the majority of our donors are students uh, because they are uh, between 20 and 30 years or the the majority of them and they are students but we are not selecting according those uh, those topics all right understood of course thank you for your answer to this question and for your question indeed as well okay um next question is so do you transfer two embryos in older women to increase the chances no uh it's uh, it's the opposite uh, it depends on the age as uh, uh, with egg donation uh, it doesn't mind the maternal age because we are using very good quality eggs so the probabilities are the same. If you have 35 or if you have 42 years old. So we are not transferring two embryos in older women. We are transferring one embryo 
only the couple wants to transfer two, we transfer two to increase probabilities. It's true that if we transfer two, we are increasing probabilities because we have two options at the at the same attempt. But if with one embryo we have around 55% of probability of pregnancy rate, if we transfer two embryos at the same time, we have 70% of, of pregnancy rate. But we are increasing complications, and the complications into pregnancy can be severe. Where, uh, and when the woman is over 44 years old, it's contraindicated to transfer two embryos because we have seen that it's more likely to have complications over 44 years old. So when the woman is young, we can think about transferring two. The medical team is not recommending to transfer two, but you can do it. But the, when, when the woman is older than 44 years old, it's contraindicated to transfer two embryos. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for uh, explaining that to us as well. Okay, and uh, of course, let's see the next question. I am in London and after attending a webinar with IVF, uh, IVI London, we learned that IVI London could liaise with IVI clinic in Spain. How would payment for that work? Could I pay the Spanish payment package or would it be pay as you go? Okay, yes, uh, we have a clinic in, uh, in London and we have patients from London that are coming to Alicante because we uh, in all the clinics, IVI clinics, we work the, the same way, so we, we are doing the same, but it's true that in, in all the countries the laws are not the same, so patients need to come here to perform an egg donation because in their countries it's not allowed to do an egg donation. Uh, EB London uh, can, uh, is working with us every day to, to prepare everything in London and only they have to come to Spain for the embryo transfer. But this is with EV London and in all the cases, because if the, if the patient has a, high, a gynecologist that can, could, that can help us, the patient is doing all the preparation in, in, in her country and she only needs to be here for the embryo transfer. Or uh, to leave, to produce a semen sample the day of the donation to, uh, to fertilize the eggs. So maximum six days is necessary to stay in, in Alicante to have uh, the IVF uh, with the egg donation done. The payment, the payment, uh, it depends if the, if the treatment is done in Alicante, the payment is usually done in Alicante, but I'm a gynecologist and I'm not very uh, used to to manage uh, to 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 have the payments. And so this is a very special question for the uh, pace, for the administration. For the uh, I'm not sure about how to do it, but I know you have to do it in advance before the embryo transfer. You have until the day of the embryo transfer, uh, until the de day of the donation, sorry. Until the day of the donation, you have time to do, to do, to do the payment, but the, the special details, I, I don't know exactly, because I'm a, a gynecologist. Of course, thank you so much, still. And I just want to mention that if you would like to get the details, I will send you a link in a few minutes. You will be able to simply ask uh, the team and I'm sure they will be happy to help you out with this. Uh, re the rest of the question regarding the payment, yes? Yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And so why we are talking about uh, different places. So do you have clinic in France? No, no yet. In France, we don't have. Mm -hmm. We have in London, in Roma, and in Spain, we have several clinics, but in France, we don't have IVI clinic. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for clarification. All right, next question is ready as well. If you are synchronizing the donor and the recipient, that means you only work with 
in fresh cycles? If we are working with fresh eggs, we, it's necessary to synchronize the donor with the recipient. And if we are using frozen eggs, uh, we use the treatment to synchronize the days the, to, to have, a, according to the preferences of the patients, to fix the week that the embryo transfer will take place. But we are not always using fresh donors, fresh cycle. We can use vitrified frozen cycles. And sometimes uh, the donor that we need to select for the patient, we are eggs that we have in our bank of vitrified eggs. So we can use frozen eggs too. It's necessary to synchronize when the donation is in fresh, but we have both options and both are the same in results. All right. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for explaining this as well. Uh, okay, next uh, is also right here. If we accept the risk of twins or in fact prefer twins, would it be possible to request two embryos to transfer? Yes, of course, but only if there are no contraindications. If the, if the, the woman uh, doesn't have chronic illnesses or pathologies that can uh, uh, can get worse during the can get worse during the pregnancy, or if the patient is over forty four years old, is contraindicated. But if the woman is a healthy woman without pathologies, um, is under 44 years old, we can transfer to embryos. All right, excellent. Thank you so much once again for that. Okay, and uh, this question is here. Is fresh or frozen eggs best? It's the same. There are no differences. All right, excellent. Thank you for clarification. You have already uh, mentioned this, but of course, thank you for um, providing that uh, again. And actually here, so which clinics in London do you work with? Is it only EV in London or any other as well? No, uh, uh, I, IVIT has a clinic in London, but we, uh, we can't uh, work with any, with all the clinics, we, we don't have preferences. We have an IVI clinic that is working as, as we are working in Alicante, but if you want to go to another clinic or you have an insurance that is covering all the costs, or you have the gynecologist uh, and you always go to the same gynecologist, we can do all the treatment with, the, with, with your gynecologist or your usual clinic. Uh, we don't need to to have the the scans done in IVI London. We can work with all the clinics and all the gynecologists that are helping us to 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 do the scan because we need only two scans during the procedure and one blood test during the the, the treatment. Uh, the two months of waiting. Uh, of preparation, we need only two scans and one blood test. Um, perhaps if the patient is not preparing uh, at the first uh, scan, we have to do an extra scan, three scan maximum and two blood tests. And we only need a gynecologist to help us to do the scan and the blood test. We, we don't have preferences and you don't need to go to IVI in London. We, if we, if you go to IVI London, perhaps it's easier because we are communicating every day by email and we, we have contact and all the medical background done, uh, but it's not necessary. All right, excellent, thank you. Once more for that. Okay, um, there's the question, how do you look after the recipient if they are traveling from abroad? Okay, after the embryo transfer, uh, the patient can fly the same day because it's not necessary to do a um, special resting. They don't need to rest after the embryo transfer. They only need to 
not to make efforts or exercises exercise three years three, three days sorry three days after the embryo transfer but they can fly if they want to go home the same day of the embryo transfer they can fly and some patients prefer to wait until the day after the embryo transfer and once they are at home in their country they can do the pregnancy test in, in blood it's a blood test uh, 10 days after the embryo transfer and they do the blood test and they send by email the results or by phone and later uh, they need to do an scan to, to, to see if everything is normal two weeks after the pregnancy test and we are waiting for the results to give our recommendation, our instruction and what they need to do after they get pregnant. We are uh, we are waiting for the first two scans to have everything uh, controlled, and then they can uh, go to their gynecologist or to their hospital to to look after and to follow the, to have a, a good checking checkup for the of their pregnancy. I would to see if everything is developing correctly but we are always in contact with the patient we don't we don't stop our uh, contact at uh, the day of the embryo transfer we continue the the contact uh, for the pregnancy test for the first scan and do it during all the pregnancy and again, thank you for this again. And th thank you so much. I'm sorry, I'm just checking um, other questions. There's the next one. Would you require fibers to, re to be removed, multiple but intramural and endometriosis to be treated? Okay. Uh, endometriosis. Uh, if we are going ahead with an ectonation treatment, uh, and the endometriosis is not very symptomatic, we don't need to treat it. Uh, only the endometriosis needs to be treated when the woman has a lot of pain every day or the majority part of, the, the, of her cycle, only because of the symptoms, but not to a help with an egg donation. Uh, related to fibroids, is the, it depends on how many fibroids, the size of the fibroids, fibroids or where they are allocated. If the fibroids are inside the uterus, in the lining, the lining is the inner part of the uterus where the embryos come, needs to be implanted to, to grow, they need to be removed. All the fibroids and the small and the, the bigger, all the fibers needs to be removed. If they are intramural, it depends on the size. If they are intramural, but they are not in, encroaching the cavity, only we recommend to remove the, the fibers if they are more, if they are higher than four centimeters. So if they are multiple, multiple but intramural, it depends on the size, is the main thing that we have taken into account. And if they are multiple and they are affecting all the, the walls of the of the uterus, is we have to 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 check with an scan to see if the probabilities are decreasing because of the fibrils. Some of fibrils are always removed, and some of them can be there and they don't need to be removed to go ahead with an egg donation. But if the fiber is over five centimeters, it's always recommended to remove it to improve the result. Again, thank you so much for that explanation as well. Okay, next question is, so can we request the age bracket of our donor? Oh, uh, 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 all the donors are between 18 and 34 years old because when they are all over 35, they cannot be donor. And uh, I, 
I, the majority of our donors are between 18 and 29 years or maximum because is the, they come here uh, voluntarily and anonymously and they are the majority of them are, are students and are between 20 and 30 years of maximum. Can we request the, the age? We are selecting the donor according to the physical characteristics, the, uh, the medical background of the patients, their reproductive history. We are taking into account all the special details of the couple to select the donor. Uh, and they are always young, so the, the, the quality will be good. The, in all the cases okay excellent thank you so much and we when we are talking about matching the donors so there's the question so if you are struggling to find a good match in terms of physical characteristics do you just go with the closest match or is there a benchmark that needs to be met do you wait for a closer match okay uh we uh, at the, nowadays we don't have a, a waiting list because we have a very huge number of donors, a very huge pool of donors between the donors that are waiting to be stimulated and the donors that have been stimulated and we are uh, we have frozen directs. So we have a, a bank of eggs. Uh, uh, donors waiting and uh, we don't have to wait we don't have a waiting list we can start very in a very short time sometimes if the physical characteristics are very very special this can be perhaps chinese patients because here in spain uh, uh, we don't have many Chinese donors. Perhaps we have to wait for a closer match. We have to wait until we have a, a closest matching for the patients. But in general, if the patients are Caucasian, uh, they, they live in Europe, uh, we have donors, uh, enough donors to select. And uh, um, between all the donors that can be compatible, we are selecting the best matching. Uh, the donors uh, here in Alicante, we have donors from all over the, the world, but especially from Europe. It's, it's, it's true that the majority of them are from, from Spain, but in Alicante, there are German people living, uh, Russian people, English people, uh, French people. So donors, we have donors from, from Europe, and perhaps for very specific physical characteristic, we have to wait if the patient wants to have a very, very close <coughs> excuse me, matching. But in general, it's not necessary to wait. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And actually, you have just answered this question. So all our donors Spanish, so you have mentioned that you have other donors yes. as well. And there's one more question, actually. Uh, do you have black donors as well available? Yes, here in Alicante, we have uh, black donors. Uh, we have several, several donors, uh, black uh -huh. donors. Because excellent. here in Alicante, we have... Uh, uh, between uh, Alicante, Valencia, uh, there are people and there are students in the universities that are coming from other countries and we have black donors. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you so much. And one more thing about the donors, can you specify nationality of the donor? Okay, we can. We are not allowed to, do, to give you the, the nationality because we have to keep the anonym the, the, the donation is anonymous and we have to keep it we can give you a donor form that is including the physical characteristics of the donor all the tests that we have done to the donor but we cannot specify the nationality we are not we are not allowed to do it 
Okay, all right. Of course, thank you so much for clarification to this. And uh, one more question regarding the donors. How do the donors benefit from donating their eggs? Do they get paid or is it purely altruistic? Well, I, I'm in contact, in direct contact with the donors every day because the gynecologist needs to do a scan to the donors uh, to verify that they have a good ovarian reserve and to, to, te to, to review all the tests that we do to the donor. And um, most of them are alt is altruistic. The, in Spain, the donations in general are very frequent. The people are uh, very altruistic. Uh, altruist. The, the, in Spain, uh, we can donate blood, we, we can donate uh, eggs, we can donate semen, and it's very common to, to donate uh, everything. So, uh, most of them are altruists, uh, and, and the majority of them are very young and sometimes very young mothers that they have their, their own eggs and wants to they want to help uh, to other people. There are um, there there are a few donors of donors that they think that they, they are not having children because they don't want to be mothers, and they think they can donate their eggs to help another woman, or they have a uh, a sister or or uh, someone in in their families that have had problems for the fertility problems and they want to help to other people to but it's to that they are uh, receiving uh, uh, what what we call uh, Sorry, I don't like a compensation. Yes, exactly, a compensation because they have to to come to the clinic several uh, days. They have to need, they need to pass a psychological test, uh, all the blood tests, the the scans, the simulation, the all the medication that they need to use. They lose uh, days in their jobs to come to the clinic. The day of the egg retrieval, uh, they need to rest because we they, they, we are using anesthesia, so they lose a uh, day in their jobs. So we, they have a compensation for the egg donation, but this mm, they is the time that they uh, use for the egg donation is bigger and the appointments and all they have to do, then the compensation. Right? They, they have a compensation for all the days that they have to lose in their, in their jobs, in their jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And actually, one more question in regards to the donors. You kind of answered that, but uh, so are donors match for anything other than appearance? Do you do a basic personality test, height or other characteristics? Yes, according to the height, yes. Uh, according to the weight, no, because there is a maximum or weight that they uh, they they, don't, they cannot pass a uh, 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 weight. They, they don't have overweight because they cannot be donor. But according to the height, yes. And I, as I told, I have told before, we are not doing a, a personality test or a intelligent questionnaire because according to the Spanish law, it's not necessary and it's not permitted. Of course. Okay. Thank you so much again. All right. And I guess we can go to the next question. So what is the best guarantee for a 44 year old with donor eggs, eight mature eggs or two blastocysts or four embryos? I have a few small fibroids. Sorry, I'm reading the question because I don't understand very well. Mm -hmm. Like best guarantee, whether it's eight mature eggs or two blastocysts or just four uh, embryos. Uh, uh, 
the important is the number of blastocysts, uh, uh, but at the end, we donate more than eight eggs. We will have more than two embryos. And if we have two or three embryos, we have two or three attempts. We can repeat uh, the treatment if the first one is not working. So when the woman is over 40, uh, it's very likely to, to need an egg donation because the quality of the eggs are decreasing their quality according to the maternal age. So it's very frequent to go ahead with an egg donation when the woman is over 40 years old. So when the woman is 44, the, the treatment recommended is an egg donation because it's very, very difficult to get a pregnancy with their own eggs. If we go ahead with an egg donation, the probabilities are the same. Uh, and it doesn't mind the, the age. And if we have one blastocyst transfer, 55% of the patient get pregnant. If we take into account the, what we call the accumulated pregnancy rate, if we have more attempts, the probabilities are higher. With two attempts, around 70% of the patients are getting pregnant. But it's not related to the to the age, because the, the important is that the eggs are good quality because they are coming from donors. OK, excellent. Thank you so much for that answer to this question as well. OK, and uh, let me go. OK, uh, sorry, this, the, there's the question. When do you think donors in Spain will become non-animous? Oh, I, I think that, I don't know, <laughs> but the, nowadays this is not a, a, a question that is considered, is taken into account to change it. I think it will be anonymous always, but I don't know. It depends on the government, but in, any, in, in all the cases, if uh, in the future the donors are non-anonymous, uh, from that moment onwards, the donation will be non-anonymous, but it's not retroactive. If the donation has taken place before, it will be anonymous. And it's not the, if there is a law in the future that uh, permits the non-anonymous donation, the, it will be from that moment onwards. It's not retroactive. So. If you have done the treatment before, it will be anonymous and the donor cannot uh, know if the, the X has been used and the patient cannot know who is the donor. And the, the children in the future cannot contact with the donor. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And next question, you answered the first part, okay, uh, because of the UK IVI clinic in London, where you have mentioned, but do you have many donors with blonde hair and blue eyes? Oh, yes, we have many. And uh, when we are selecting donors, uh, we we have lots of uh, English patients, Irish patients, German, and they usually have blonde hair and blue eyes. So when we are selecting donors, uh, um, it depends on our bank. We say, we accept more donors of long hair or blue eyes to have a very uh, huge pool of, of, of donors of different physical characteristics with long hair, with brown hair, blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes. And here in Spain, uh, the there are a very uh, uh, variety of physical characteristics. We don't have problems to select donors with blue eyes. We have lots of blue eyes because we know that we have lots of patients that are, that are coming from Ireland, from England, from Germany. So we have enough donors to have, to have several donors to select between. Excellent. Thank you so much again for answering this question. And next one is, if the transfer is unsuccessful, how soon can you try again? 
Once we have done the egg donation, the, the egg donation is the longest, that lasts uh, around two months, one and a half, two months. But if we have surplus embryos frozen, it's very quick because if we only need to wait for the next menstruation, once uh, the pregnancy test is done, if, the, if it unfortunately is negative, we wait for the menstruation uh, the following days. The menstruation is coming and we can start again and in only three weeks from the menstruation we can do an, another embryo transfer if everything if everything is normal in the control scans but the second attempt if we have frozen embryos is only in three weeks from the menstruation all right excellent thank you again for this as well and the next question is also ready right here what's your intake on the mock cycle i was advised to do so to see how well the endometrial lining respond due to small fibroids okay sometimes to avoid a, a preparation that can be cancelled we can do a mock test it's not very frequent but sometimes if the, for example if the patient is men of uh, is under the menopause, uh, perhaps it's more difficult to, to make the lining grow and sometimes we need to do a mock cycle to see if the uterus is preparing correctly or not. Uh, it, uh, because of the fibers, sometimes uh, when the lining is very thin, we cannot see if the fibers are encroaching the cavity and are affecting to the results when we are doing an embryo transfer. Only if we do a mock cycle, preparing the uterus uh, the same as for an embryo transfer, we do exactly the same. We are giving you hormones, tablets to prepare the, the lining. And when the lining is, has a good thickness, it has a good thickness, we can see the fibers if they are encroaching the cavity or not. And we can decide if they have to be removed or not. If they are very small, they don't need to be re removed. But if they are small, but they are inside the lining, they need to be removed. And the only way to see is to make the lining grow the same as we are doing for the embryo transfer and see if the lining has a good aspect, has a good thickness, and is homogeneous because it needs to be plain without anything encroaching inside all right excellent again thank you for this okay and if you could explain this as well what do you consider when you say pregnancy right live births the, the there are different ways that we are considering uh, the pregnant when i when we talk about pregnancy rate is the uh, pregnancy test positive when you do uh, the blood test to know if you are pregnant or not. The pregnancy rate is, is this, if you are pregnant or not after the treatment. Live birth is, a, is another uh, rate, the live birth rate. It's, uh, in the egg donation is very high because the probability of miscarriages uh, with egg donation are very low. There are, uh, sometimes there are miscarriages and we don't know the reason, but uh, young women can have miscarriages. And now we don't know exactly why, but there are uh, miscarriages in, in young women's, women. So uh, the life birth rate is always low than the pregnancy, lower than the pregnancy rate, but it's around 45% because the, the, the loss is very very low the miscarriages or the problems during the pregnancy all right okay thank you so much for that okay next question is also ready i am 32 and also got pcos so i was reassured we are sure that only minimal stimulation would be used what are the chances of h o h s s and how does it affect my health okay uh, for the PCOS, uh, is to that when a woman uh, has uh, PCOS, uh, she has uh, a very high ovarian reserve. 
So in, it's not very likely to need an egg donation. This is a, a we are talking about a stimulate their own eggs, their own ovaries. Uh, we usually use a minimal stimulation because it's not necessary to use higher doses of medication or hormones when the woman has a very good ovarian reserve. Uh, the polycystic uh, syndrome is very special because sometimes they are uh, responding very, very high to the stimulation with a minimal stimulation. And sometimes they are responding very low and they have a, a, a not very good response to the ovarian stimulation. It's a pathology uh, of the ovaries, uh, uh, very difficult to, to handle. To, to manage, uh, uh, there is, they always have the risk of hyperstimulation syndrome, uh, but uh, this is a risk that we can avoid because when we are uh, doing the scans and we are doing blood tests during the stimulation, we are controlling, uh, we, are, we know if we have the risk or not. When the ovaries are responding very much and they have a very high response to the stimulation, we can uh, be, uh, go to the to do the egg retrieval, fertilize the eggs, but we are freezing the embryos and we are not transferring the embryos in the same cycle because we need to wait until the ovaries turn to the to the normality again and the hormonal levels turn to the normality again. We are using a, a different medication at the end of the stimulation. It's not the, the same when we are transferring embryos because we don't have hyperstimulation hyper syndrome than when we are freezing the embryos because we have the risk of hyperstimulation syndrome. We use different medication. If we are using uh, medication to avoid hyperstimulation syndrome, we avoid this uh, side effect, effect of the stimulation, but we need to wait one month, we have transferring embryos, we freeze them and wait then in the, with the second menstruation until waiting one month, mm. we can transfer the embryo. There is a waiting time to leave the ovaries turn to the normality to avoid the hyperstimulation. To, nowadays, it's very unlikely to, to have a severe hyperstimulation syndrome and needs to be in the hospital because this war was frequent 20 years ago, but not now because we are uh, controlling during the cycle the hormonal levels and we know when we have the risk or not. Okay, perfect. Again, thank you so much for that. And now we have a very um, question that, I mean, it's uh, definitely interesting and because of what's going on. Uh, how do you test all donors on COVID-19? Do you accept donor if they have positive results? Okay, we, we are not uh, talking about COVID-19 because now is is everything improving, but uh, we are doing... Uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, we are doing tests to all the donors, semen donors and egg donors. We are testing antibodies uh, before starting the stimulation. Uh, and if they are positive, they cannot donate. And when we are very near to the egg retrieval, we perform the PCR. The three days before the egg retrieval, when we know exactly when the donation is taking place, we perform the PCR to know if the if it's positive or negative. If, if, if the PCR is ne COVID PCR is negative, we can go ahead with the donation. If the PCR is positive, we can sell the donation and we don't use the uh, the the eggs. Instead of knowing that the COVID is not transmitted by the eggs. There are no realistic evidence in the transmission of coronavirus uh, by 
by the edge, but if we do the PCR and it's positive, we are not using the 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 X of the donor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for clarification to that as well. Okay. Um, let's have a look at the next question. We have few questions left. I am forty-seven. Worried that I do not fall pregnant with natural plan. Worried my uterus will not have correct thickness to hold the embryo with receiving hormonal drugs. Can you advise? Okay, uh, natural plan. I I suppose that uh, it go, it means in a natural cycle or in a natural way. I don't know exactly. But with no drugs. With no natural, drugs. No, with no drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay, the natural cycle. Uh, in the natural cycle, if the woman has regular periods, uh, the the lining prepares well. Is the same in a, in a hormonal treatment. If we are uh, we are controlling everything with the scans, if the thickness of the lining is not correct, we are not going ahead with the donation or the embryo transfer. The uterus uh, needs to have a good lining, a good thickness over six and a half millimeters, and a good appearance too. We call uh, a triple li layer. To, is the appearance of the of the lining, and if everything is normal, it doesn't mind if the, if the cycle is natural or uh, with a hormonal treatment. Uh, it's the same for for the pregnancy rate. But it's usual when a woman is 47 years old that the natural cycles are not very regular, and perhaps the the ovaries are not ovulating correctly, and there are mm, more cancellations. Uh, we have the risk of cancel the cycle and to wait for, and we have to wait for other menstruation and we are losing time. We lose the month, we have to wait for the, other, the next menstruation, we try again, and the natural cycles, uh, sometimes, if we don't have a good ovulation and we don't have a good thickness in the lining, we have to wait another month. Okay, understood, of course, as well. Okay, and so if I do a frozen cycle, how many eggs would I expect to get? Uh, when when it's a frozen cycle, we know exactly how many eggs we have from the donor. I mean, they are always more than the, the more than eight. Is uh, so uh, if the donor. Uh, if we do the retrieval and we obtain 14 eggs, you will receive 14, uh, 14 eggs. If we receive 12 eggs, uh, we, you will receive, we will donate the quantity of eggs that we have obtained from the egg retrieval. But always more than eight, taking into account the very low risks of uh, loss uh, because they don't survive, that is only a 5% of the eggs that can not survive currently to the thawing procedure. But we, is, if it's frozen or it's a fresh cycle, we guarantee you that you will have minimum two embryos. It's very difficult, but sometimes can happen that we don't have two embryos. Is something is not working correctly and we have only one very good embryo with very high possibilities of pregnancy but we don't have we don't have more if the if the embryo that we had transferred doesn't work and the patient uh, don't achieve her pregnancy we will we will donate again and uh, uh, we will perform a new donation to guarantee you that you will have minimum one more embryo to transfer. So if the first attempt we don't have two, we are guarantee you, guaranteeing you that you will have minimum two, three or more embryos. If we don't have two, we are repeating again the donation without cost. All right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for that. And actually the next question is, so what is Evie's policy on a negative pregnancy? Do you try again or is it classed class as a new treatment including new fees 
It, the, the fees are depending on the thing that we are doing the second time. If we have a surplus embryos that are frozen, the costs are lower because we have all the first part done, the donation, and we only need to be to do an, a frozen embryo transfer. And it's easier and uh, is it's cheaper too. But if we have a negative pregnancy test the first time, we try again with the surplus embryos and we don't have to start from the beginning with a new selection of the donor. We have all this part done and we only need to prepare the uterus and so one frozen embryo. So the fees are different from for the egg donation and for the uh, frozen embryo transfer. We can, we can solve all these Doubts, if you contact with us, we can give you the fees and the cost of the team. All right, excellent. Thank you for that. And um, are, are you accepting clients from abroad? Are there travel restrictions? Okay, nowadays, we, as far as we are aware, from 1st July onwards, and perhaps before, but there is I am sure that from 1st July onwards, all the passen international passengers can can travel to Spain, can, can come here without restrictions and without quarantine. I think this, is, this has changed and from uh, 22nd of June next week will be the will be possible to travel to Spain without quarantine, but I'm sure that from 1st July onwards, you can travel here with a problem, without this restriction, and you don't need to have quarantine. Excellent. That is definitely good news for all the patients out there. So thank you for that. Okay. And so what is the average number of five-day blastocysts of good quality that you get from donor eggs? The, the, the most frequent is between 10 and 12 eggs donated. We have around two, three egg, uh, embryos. They find good quality embryos. And it's not frequent to have less than two, and it's not frequent to have more than four. So the average is between two, three, perhaps four embryos. And it's, not more, it's not frequent to have more because the humans are not very fertile. But we, not all the eggs are giving place to embryos. The embryos donated needs to fertilize. This, this is the first step. And depends on the semen quality, we have more fertilization rate or, or less. Once they pass the fertilization, it's normal that not all the eggs fertilize correctly. This is true. And when they mm, develop from the first day until day five, there are embryos that are uh, stopping their development. This is normal too. It's a natural selection of the embryos and humans are not very fertile. We need a very high quantity of eggs to have very few embryos. But at the end arrive only the embryos that are good quality and have very high possibilities of pregnancy. So uh, the, the average is two, three, maximum four. We have cases that we have, have more, more than four, but it's not very frequent. Instead of in very young women. All right, excellent. Thank you. And we have like four or five questions left, so we will be slowly finishing. So if you have any questions left, this will be like the final call for those questions and it's regarding the fibers the previous question uh, actually um, okay so if you could take a look so don't fibers grow with the hormones that's what happened to me and they were much bigger than the doctor thought mm, well it can happen the fibers are uh, hormone dependent and they grow while the woman has hormones. When the woman is under the menopause, the fibers are not growing. And if we are giving you hormonal medication 
and we need in the majority of the cases to, to do a hormonal medication, the fibroids can grow, but the grow uh, is very slow. It's not usual to have a very fast growing of the growth of your fibroids. It's not very common. They can grow with the hormones. Um, in only very few cases can grow very, very fast but it's not very common. If, they, if the fibers don't need to be removed, it's because they are not very big, and it's very difficult to have a fiber that in the beginning of the treatment is don't, that doesn't need to be removed, and when you are arriving to the embryo transfer, it's so big that you need to, be re, to remove the, the fiber. It's, it's not very common. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for this. Okay, next question is also ready. Uh, so my potential donor has a corpus luteum and hasn't started an IVF cycle yet. Will this be a problem when she starts? Oh no, it's not a problem. A corpus luteum is, is a it's a formation that we that is normal to have in the ovaries after the ovulation. After the ovulation, uh, the, the egg goes out to the fallopian tube and the remain is called corpus luteum. Sometimes the corpus luteum uh, stays more time than the normality and when the donor has the menstruation, the corpus luteum uh, is, is there in their ovaries and we cannot start the stimulation. But this, this is very frequent and only giving contraceptive pill, we can't uh, make it disappear. It's something very common and it's totally normal. This, that's, it doesn't affect to the, to the stimulation, to, to the ovarian stimulation. All right, thank you so much for clarification to this one then. Um, okay, next question is, so how successful is a live birth during a natural population plan with donor X at 47? I have regular per periods. Okay, we are talking about live birth. Natural, okay, it's not pretty much right. Uh, around live birth with an egg donation is around 44, 45 sorry, 45% the, the live birth rate, 40, 45% to, to arrive to the end of the pregnancy without problems and to have a baby. Okay, excellent. Thank you for clarification once again. All right, next question is whether you know our hotels in Cali County taking customers? Yes, they have started with national uh, people uh, two, weeks, uh, two weeks ago and um, from next week onwards they will be accepting customer international customers so if you are thinking about coming to Spain to have holidays at the same time to have your team and done uh, the hotels uh, the, the don't have problems okay in, in Spain, the pandemic is very has improved very, very, very much, and we are now more relaxed. Excellent. That's really good news indeed. Okay, and in it's regarding actually similar question. So, um, if traveling back to UK, you are required to quarantine for two weeks. Would this be an issue in terms of treatment needed when come back to UK? Okay, yes, when, uh, 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 now, nowadays when you go back to the UK, you need to, to do a quarantine, but it's not necessary when you come to Spain. So you can come to Spain, uh, have your embryo transfer done, and you go to the UK and you require the quarantine. But it's not a problem because the problem is in terms of the job that you need to to stay at home two weeks but here in spain you come back the same day of the EMD transfer mm -hmm. okay 
again thank you so much for that and there are like two questions left and we will be finishing so let's have a look at this question right here as well so can you get a contract with a guaranteed live birth and not just a guaranteed pregnancy okay this is a good question because i have forgotten to mention it we have a contract as it is called ev baby contract and is uh, to guarantee you that you will have a, a new war uh, maximum after performing three egg donation. If we have, if we are, uh, we do a, the first donation and it's negative. We do a second donation with a different donor and it's negative again. We don't achieve the pregnancy. We arrive to the third attempt and we don't have achieved the pregnancy we will refund you all the costs of the, all the treatment because uh we guarantee you that we, you will have a baby but after maximum three egg donations this is the the only contract that we have for guarantee a uh, live birth and we, we are guaranteeing a live birth, a newborn, not only a, a blood test with a pregnancy test positive. All right, okay, definitely sounds interesting. Um, thank you so much for that. And well, uh, this is our last question, so let's have a look at it. Um, so how do the live birth rates compared with uh, the use of two embers versus one? Ah, okay, I suppose uh, there's uh, two embryos at the same time with a double embryo transfer uh, mm -hmm. with the same yes. uh, uh, the, the, the live birth rates are a bit lower when we transfer two, only in the cases they are twin pregnancies because the twin pregnancies has complications. It's not, it's not only to have two babies at the same time the complications uh, can be for the mother the mother can have hypertension severe hypertension the, that is the most common complication during the pregnancy diabetes uh, uh, emergency c-section because of the hypertension or uh, other complication and the for the babies uh, they have uh, complications too. They are very usually uh, premature and they can, can have problems in the future for we, because of the prematurity. So the, at the end, the, the miscarriages are more frequent with twins. The complications are more frequent and they come, uh, the, sometimes the pregnancy needs to be stopped because the mother is very has severe problems so the live birth when the when it's had twin pregnancy are is is lower it's not depending if we transfer one or two because only half of the patient that transfer two have twins the other the half, half of the patient have twins 50 percent of the patient have only one after transferring two embryos but the live births in twin pregnancy are lower because of the complications. And excellent. Thank you so much for again explaining that. And actually, uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions because uh, we will be finishing for today. So uh, as you can see, the patients also are thankful for your uh, support today, for your help with the questions. So here you can see some of those. Thank you very much for answering all these questions. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for all your answers. It has been very interesting and helpful and thank you for your time and sharing the, this valuable information so more of those again are coming up your way dr veronica thank you so much indeed uh, it is it has been very very interesting to find out a bit more on egg donation and how it works in in a your clinics and in spain in general uh, Thank you for the detailed answers as well. Couldn't agree more. And well, is there anything else you would like to add? 
No, I only want to thank to all the people because they have participated a lot and I'm very glad to, to have uh, all the people asking on because I have explained, I think I have explained almost everything and thank you for your questions and uh, um, I, I, will be, I will be waiting for your doubts or questions if you want to contact us in, in IBI Alicante. Thank you very much. Thank you as well. And I just want to mention that, of course, if you would like to have uh, some more details from uh, Dr. Veronica and her team, and of course, all you need to do is also click on this link. I have just sent it to you. That way, there is an option to ask your questions there, and I'm sure they will be happy to get back to you and provide you with more details. So uh, if you like it, then just go ahead and do it. And I just want to mention that this has been recorded. Therefore, you will have a chance to re-watch it on our website myivfenses.com and if you simply um, subscribe to our YouTube channel you will be updated when the video is actually uploaded so I can only encourage you to do it and also stay tuned as you know there are more events coming up so you can follow us on our Facebook page or Instagram that way you will know when the new uh, event is coming up and uh, as you know there is another one at 8 p.m uk time today this time genetic screening and so i can i will be happy to see you there as well uh, thank you so much everyone for joining and uh, best of luck to you all with all of the treatments and i know that some of you will be able to start very very soon so fingers crossed for all of you to all of you um yes exactly <laughs> dr veronica it has been a great pleasure to have you here thank you so much for you joining us uh, i believe that it went well for you as well i know you have been a bit stressed but i think it went perfect Okay, thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.